Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and let's make some games. So, last time in the series I was uh, I was doing pause menu stuff, was I not? And the resume button works, the restart button works, although there wasn't much to restart there. Uh, the settings menu I, I put later on because that is what I'm going to be doing today and quick game works. So, let's, uh, let's use some more menu stuff. First, I am going to go into the room and I am going to start defining some new layers. Um, I'm going to lay out a settings menu for like screen size and full screen versus window mode and all that. But I think I um, I may implement the actual functionality of those in a separate video because uh, setting the screen size and, and resolution and that sort of thing can be a little bit involved. Um, first, let me go and create myself a new object layer. Uh, this can be UI game pause menu settings. Because we're just um, we're just piling on the um, the layers here and the words onto the layer names and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's going to be UI game pause menu settings. Uh, that is um, I'm probably not going to do too many more too many more things like this. Uh, too many too many more menus in the pause menu. But um, firstly, I am going to go and drag myself a uh, where's the UI stuff. Graphical stuff, user interface stuff, perfect. A um, one of these objects over here, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to. Let's that's a sprite. I'm not looking for a sprite. Uh, UI UI text. I'm going to draw drag some UI text onto here, and this is just going to say like the game is paused or something. How big is okay? Um, we can do that. Creation code. Is it creation code or is it, is it a, a variable? All right, there we go. So this text is going to say uh, settings on it. And there's going to be a few buttons. One may be uh, at the bottom, uh, return. Or I guess I'll say back or something like that. Uh, this can be back. And there can be, uh, for example, full screen. Versus a, versus a window. Um, I'm going to... All right, yeah, I'm gonna have a, a, a screen size. So like the resolution, so 1280, 720 or uh, full HD or whatever, UHD. And I'll have a full screen as a second option. And I think for now, uh, I will have some sort of volume control. And the way I'm gonna do the, the first and third of these is gonna be a little bit different from just a button. Um, but this is going to be easy. Uh, this will say variables full screen. And uh, what it actually says will be, will be determined by what it, um, oh God, what, what the state of the, of the screen actually is. And there will be, as I said, volume. I'm just filling in the buttons right now so I can see where they're laid out on the screen. I may break this up into like master volume, um, sound effects and music or whatever if I if I end up doing music at, at some point. I probably will at some point because that's like part of the game, but maybe not right now. And um, screen size was the last one. So this is this is UI game pause menu settings. I will I will close that for now and I will go into um, Oh God, how is this? Uh, how does this work? Make the text bigger for one, and then in um, I'm looking for I'm looking for how it's drawn on the UI. So if game mode is, is paused, I haven't done this in a couple of weeks. I recorded a uh, a batch of videos the last time I sat down to do this, and have been slowly posting those one at a time. And I haven't uh, actually touched the code in quite a bit now. Okay, this is what I'm looking for in the um, in the draw GUI method down here. We are uh, we are drawing a different overlay based on like what's um, based on what's active right now. When the game is paused, we are just drawing the the, the main game pause menu uh, layer, and we can switch this out to anything else. We can switch this out to UI game pause menu settings. We could have like UI game like title screen or something if we wanted. Uh, that will be coming up in due time. 
But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of drawing this string directly, I am going to draw, um, I'm going to save this in a variable somewhere. And this is going to be probably where the, uh, where the UI is defined is down here. And this can be, um, something like current pause UI is going to equal this. And this is, a uh, this is a little bit spaghetti. All right, to make it to make myself feel better about it, I will call I'll, I will call it current pause screen, and instead of um instead of whatever it was a minute ago, and this will this will be swapped out based on which screen in the pause menu you're on. So uh, the main pause menu would be this one. If you're going to the settings menu, it would be that. If I uh, at some point, hopefully during this video, I would like to have a um a yes, no dialogue box that asks you, do you want to quit the game? Because that's a bit of a, um, if you click that by accident during the middle of a game, that could be very aggravating, let's just say. So it's good to have a confirmation over that. Um, there might be a third option that's like, yes, no, and return to, return to main menu or like cancel, uh, quit to desktop and quit to main menu or something like that. But we'll get to that when we get to that. <clears throat> so, um, when you hit VK escape, uh, we are just saying gameplay mode is going to equal this. Okay, uh, we can uh, UI game pause menu. It may be good instead of making this like the magic number equivalent of a string or whatever, a magic string if you want to call that, uh, to um, to store these in, in a variable somewhere so that you just, there's a reduced chance of misspelling it because uh, game maker variables have syntax highlighting to make sure that you spell things right, and obviously just strings do not. Um, we are duplicating code a little bit here, but you know what? Maybe that's okay. This is... That's when you pause the game. This is when you unpause the game. So we don't need that here, really. And is there a button on the... Um, in room test. Is there a button on the main UI that will pause the game? I don't think there is. Okay, if I, uh, I concern myself with that when I have to concern myself with that. Anyway, uh, going back to the, uh, going back to the UI, we can go into the, uh, the actual settings menu, which I believe is this one. Yeah, this is settings. I can get rid of the later, I suppose, because we're doing that now. And, uh, on, on click. Is it on click? Did I call it that? On click. Okay. Remembering what my uh, remembering what my method names are called. On click, it's gonna be function. Um, game dot current in caps game dot uh, current pause screen is going to equal UI game pause menu settings. Okay, and now when I click that settings button, we should go into a um into a settings menu of sorts. So. Incorrect type expecting a number. Uh, layer get depth. Did I misspell something somewhere else? Did I forget to... Like, did I forget to register the... Pause menu? It shouldn't be. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I, I was gonna say. Uh, the layer should be identified by the, uh, by the game just on their own without me having to do anything. But I think I, uh... Get GUI layer, and this sh this should be a current current pause screen. Okay, forgot to do forgot to add that one last little bit. So um, when you don't when you don't supply an argument to a function, it's uh, game maker assumes it is undefined, and then as you saw in the error message, uh, incorrect type undefined expecting a number, or I guess a a name. In uh, in our case, okay. So now we can uh, now we're. With that roadblock out of the way, we're back in business. We go into the settings menu and we have uh, the settings menu. None of the buttons do anything. That's fine. I'm going to make a commit. This is going to be the... Um, God, what is this going to be? This is going to be a settings menu is laid out. And I, I suppose I can also say and is accessible. Um... The first thing that you probably want to do from here is uh, have the ability to go back from that. And to do that, uh, the back button 
This is the back button. That is the quit game button. Is there a back button? I need a, I need a back button. Um, I'm just going to hide that so it's not like standing on top of me. Uh, I'm going to add a another button, which is uh, which is just going to be the back button. And I've now said that so many times that it's starting to sound weird. Um, button name. And the code is going to be um, setting the uh, setting the pause screen back to what it was before. Okay. Oh, you know what? Wait. Is this... I do have one. I don't know why I assumed I didn't have one. Okay. Uh, I don't know what I thought that one was. But we can... Um... We can just implement that behavior in there. I'm counting the buttons. I what did I think that was? I don't know. Who cares? Uh, anyway, pause game settings back settings back, and then you can resume the game if you want. Okay. Uh, you can also I, I guess that's worthy of a commit. It's like three lines of code, um, but. There we go. One thing I want to check, when you, um, I'm pretty, sh I'm like 98% sure I did this, but um, if I were to hit the escape key, pause the game, go into settings, hit the escape key to return to the game from that settings menu, and if I hit the escape key a third time, we should be going good. We're going back to the uh, to the main menu, because when you do pause the game, you, um, when you hit the escape key and enter the pause menu, it does set the current pause screen to, to, the, uh, to the main menu there. As um as intended, so from here on out, I think most of the rest of the of this video is going to be spent inside this inside the room editor, doing stuff in the room editor with creation code. That's exciting. Um, full screen versus windowed mode. There is get text right. There's another method that these things have that I can do things in. Um, I can say self.txt equals full screen plus um, there is a handy function window is full screen or window get full screen. Window get full screen. So this is a, this is going to return a true false. Uh, we can say with a handy little conditional operator full screen and then the state of the full screen mode. Uh, if it's on, that's going to be it's going to be on. Otherwise, it's just going to say off. Um, on click, I will on flick. I will fill that in momentarily. Um, once I uh, once I see that this is satisfactory, I wonder how much time I've spent just like waiting for the game to run throughout the duration of the series. Uh, full screen, it's not get text. It must be something else. If I can open the the UI button. Ooh, these workspace chains are getting weird. Um, okay, it's just update. Get text is a little like pointlessly specific. Uh, I can just say update. Okay, no, go away. And then we'll see that the uh, we'll see that the full screen text. You know, it probably would have made sense in hindsight to just implement both of these in one shot because the um, full screen buttons text will be responding to. All right, we're having some operator precedence fun with the uh, with the condi conditional operator. Um, the uh, the text that we're seeing will be responding to changes in in uh, the full screen state of the game. So we can just say on click window set full screen, the opposite of window get full screen. Okay, that's a uh, that's one of the easier buttons, I think. This is not going to work. I say it's gonna—it's one of the easier buttons, but there's a uh, there's a little bit more to setting to messing with the game window size than than that. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, I'm not sure how this is gonna play with the recording. So let me go into into settings. Full screen says off right now, as it's supposed to. Uh, if I click it, the recording has a black screen, and we are back. And uh, that is—I I do see that OBS does indeed have what I see on my screen myself. Um, 
Anyway, the button says on right now. If I were to click it again, and we can see that my mouse cursor is recording. Uh, we can see that my mouse cursor and the actual button are not like lined up on the screen, which is not really what we want. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work with that. But anyway, when I click it again, we are going to be having OBS going to a black screen once more. And when it comes back, uh, we're now in a uh, we're now in a window. Okay, so that's that's good to know. The button works as it's intended. Um, I am going to probably comment this out and return to this probably I'm thinking in the next video when I deal with uh, actual resolution and changes in the game's resolution and stuff. Um, the UI not being 100% where it's supposed to be is a bit of a problem which um, has been known to plague games when they go into full screen mode in Game Maker and just in general because UI and UI scaling is just a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure what I just described is the opposite of fun to most people. Anyway, uh, we'll be commenting that out. We'll be returning to it later. Um, full screen button works, sort of. That's good enough for now. Um, what else is there? There is, I said this one was going to be like game volume. All right, we can close that because these workspace changes are seriously. The, uh, I'm pretty sure I've debated the utility of these in the past in this series, but um, Game Maker's workspaces and the way that they're chained together like this is a point of contention, to put it generously. A lot of people really don't like them. I tolerate them, but they do tend to get in the way of, of themselves and each other uh, fairly often. I don't think they're the worst. I've seen... I, I prefer to to, uh, to previous versions of Game Maker, uh, where everything was sort of a window, which just sort of popped up on the screen and tended to block each other just all the time, but it's uh, it's got its flaws. The system has its flaws. As of my recording this in, in June 2021, Yo-Yo Games is trying to figure out how to do this better, but that's uh, that has yet to uh, that has yet to come out in any Game Maker update or anything. Anyway, volume. I can I don't have anything related to game audio right now. Um, if I were to define some of that, I could uh, probably scroll up to the top where a bunch of the other things are defined. Like, I can collapse the database. I don't need that anymore. Um, probably, I would I would say, around here, um, this is where, like, the UI settings variables are defined. And I can say volume master. I'm going to... Let's make it 100. Let's, uh, let's have it on a scale of 0 to 100. Um, part of me would like to have volume on a scale of 0 to 1, but... I don't know, it's easier to visualize when it's 0 to 100. Uh, I'm going to say volume master, but I'm not going to define anything like volume sound effects or anything like that right now. If I think that would be advantageous later, I'll do it, because once I once I add this part of the UI, it should be fairly easy to add separate volume controls for other types of, of audio. But we're going to be going with volume master. Um, creation code. We can say uh, self.text is going to equal vol volume and then string game dot uh, volume master percent and then on click is going to equal something. We are actually getting ahead of myself. This is Okay, I'm not going to. I'm go, I'm going to um, make the uh, the window size and the volume controls for this uh, for the setting menus a little bit different. Uh, they're not just going to be simple buttons that you click on and have something happen. Uh, they're going to be more like a collection of buttons. And we'll start off with that for now. So if I were to just run the game, this would look. A little bit, a little bit weird, because we would be um, we would be drawing like text on the button, except the button is really small and the text would be like spilling out of it, like this. Um, I am not going to to do that. I think uh, I'm going to comment all this out, and I'm going to leave the button there. And actually, I will grab the I will okay. I'll grab this and put it somewhere else. Uh, we will return to the button in a minute. Uh, I'm going to get a text label, and the text label can say uh, variables. 
I'm just going to label this volume. Mostly, you know what? I've been setting these up for these variable definitions up, sort of so that I can click on each of the each of the buttons and text labels and whatever and see what they're for. I could rename them here in these instance identifiers. I could call this like inst underscore setting underscore volume label or something like that. And that would be that would make it easier to find one in this instance list and just two because I don't have to look at the variable definitions if I want to see that. Anyway, I'm not used to using the room editor, to be very honest. So this is going to be a text label. This is going to say, um, this is going to say the uh, the volume level on it, and I can take a another button. I can uh, fill this in later as well, and now we should have um, a text label in the middle and two buttons on the side of that text label. And those are going to be arrows. I'm going to write some code so that you can click on like plus and minus. Instead, I think. Um, all right, plus and minus sound good. I was thinking of using a sprite with like louder and quieter icons on them or something, but in the name of keep it simple, stupid, uh, we can just have plus and uh, when you click game dot volume master equals, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say plus plus and then if. Vile plume. If volume master is greater than a hundred, uh, volume master is going to equal a hundred. So we are going to uh, increase the increase the volume, uh, but the volume will not be allowed to go above a hundred percent. I can run the game now, but if I do that, nothing is going to happen because the volume is already at a hundred percent. So let me implement that in here, uh, in except instead of, we're going to minus minus, and we're going to say if the volume is less than zero, volume equals zero. And there are nicer ways of writing this. Uh, you could do this in a single statement instead of like four lines of code. Uh, but let's just, that should say minus uh, the variable. I'm going to say minus. Uh, the behavior should be there though. So, okay, the volume text is not is not changing. Okay. Welp. Why is that? Do do text labels not have a not have an update of any sort? Thought I gave them one, cause there's like these things over here. In the game overlay, this should have. Okay, so it is get text for text labels. That's weird that I made a distinction. I'm guessing I just threw something together without putting a whole lot of thought into it. Okay, but anyway, this can be get text. I deliberately like didn't don't prepare exactly what I'm going to do ahead of time for these videos because I want to show the actual process of actually figuring out how this is going to work. But there's a part of me that feels like, and there we go, we're going down. I'm not going to click it 100 times going up. Can't go above 100%. Um, I want to show the process of figuring this stuff out, but I also feel like that's a bit of a mess. Which I guess is the point, but I don't know. I will... I have some thoughts about how this... The, the pros and cons of these things, of how this these videos have gotten made, um, of doing it this way. I will at the end do a post-mortem where I talk about that. Anyway, now that we can see that this works, I'm going to uh, code golf this a little bit and put this in one line of code instead of um, instead of four. So I'm going to say game dot volume master is going to be the minimum value of of the volume value plus one and 100 percent. So whichever one of these is smaller, uh, if one plus the current volume level is is smaller than 100 percent, then we're going to be going with that. Otherwise, uh, it will be capped at 100. If you want to, if you like the prefix operators, you can, the prefix and postfix operators, you can use those too. Um, I feel like that's, I, I don't like using those if I, if I don't already know that the person I am speaking to knows how the prefix and postfix operators work. So I generally don't, but just know that if you, if you really want to, you can plus plus game.volumemaster and have it, have it work the same. Anyway. 
Uh, that is good for the that is good for the up button. We can do something similar for the down button. Uh, game that volume master is going to be the max of this minus one, and not hundred but zero. And we're going to see that this works the same as it does before. I guess for the sake of testing and for the case of being thorough, um, go down, go up, caps out at 100. For the sake of being thorough, let me go and go all the way down to 100, to zero. And we we will see that we are not going to go below zero. My finger is getting tired. This is like I'm playing clicker games all over again. I guess I could jump in increments of like 5%, but uh, that might make things go faster. Like volume is 0%. So let's, uh, I'll do you one better. We can define the step size as, um, as a variable here. And that'll just be, be like 10. And we can do that as well in, we can do that as well with the plus button. Now all of a sudden you cannot actually use the increment and decrement operators here because uh, we are we are moving in uh, increments of larger than one. All right, so the volume. I figure if someone wants to use the game, they probably don't want to have to click on this button a hundred times. They'd rather just uh, ten is fine, really. Okay, so I can make this commit. Implemented volume controls. That's fine. Um, next the. Uh, the big one. I'm gonna do something similar to the audio controls in the what I uh, what I said resolution settings would be. Um, I have not defined anything here yet. Uh, I guess let's just uh, let's just say minus and plus for these buttons as well. And uh, this one can be plus. I will have a text label in the middle again, and that can be here. Uh, variables label will be screen size. I guess I can name these, these labels. And the get text, self dot text is going to equal um, window get width by window get height. Okay, so we are just going to display the current size of this game window on that text label. And right now, I think it's 1366 by 768. That's the size of the room. Um, and once we get to yeah, 1366 by 768, once we get to, um, implementing these are uh, these other buttons here we will uh, see that responding okay so to make that respond we are going to I thought about how I how I wanted to do this I can't say I did zero planning going into this I did think about how I wanted this to work because um it's better to sit around for like 10 minutes beforehand figuring stuff out than it is to spend sit here for 10 minutes on recording figuring stuff out at least in some cases in other cases, like the exact layout of the uh, the UI and stuff, I would rather do here. Um, I am going to... Uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could let the user just punch in their own screen size if you want. I think that I will have a like preset list of screen resolutions. So the, the common ones, uh, 720HD, 1366 for people playing on laptops, uh, 16 p 1600 by 900 um, full HD. If you want to go bigger than that, you can. But... I will save the uh, I will save the actual screen size to like a configuration file somewhere. So if the user wants to punch in their own screen size, they can do it manually. I want to have as minimal like keyboard input in this game as possible, and I don't really want to build an on-screen keyboard for like typing in your horizontal and vertical pixel counts uh, because that'll just be a mess. So screen sizes can be an array. Uh, I can say x. Uh, 1270, I missed, uh, 1280, Y, 720. And I'm just going to add in the, uh, the common screen sizes, 1366 by 768. 
um, 1600 by 900 is another common one. Uh, 12, uh, 1920 by 1080, which is uh, currently, I think, according to the Steam hardware survey, they are the most common resolution that people use. Um, or at least it was for a while. I don't know if bigger monitors are, are more common now than they used to be. Uh, and I'll do one bigger. What's 1440p? That's uh, 256 by 144, 1440, I think. Anyway, uh, screen size index. I'm going to say it's going to be equal to one. That's just going to be the index in the array that we're uh, that we're dealing with. And okay, let us increment when you click on these um, on click. It's going to equal function game dot screen. What was it? Screen size index is going to equal max of uh, game dot screen size index minus one and uh, zero. Okay, so this is very much like the volume down button and uh, some something similar here. Uh, we're going to be going with uh, sort of the opposite. So we're going to be adding one and the maximum is going to be the array length game.screen sizes minus one. So the maximum value in this array, uh, the maximum index in this array and there's not going to be any visual indication that this any visual indication that this does anything does it um i'll just show regular message here instead We'll just be seeing the uh, the screen size in a pop up. So uh, this is not going to be the final answer. I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, when it comes to screen um screen resolutions and buttons that do that sort of thing. Uh, but first, click that x twelve eighty y seven twenty. Um, it may be worth having this loop around to the maximum size instead of stopping at at the lowest uh, resolution. But anyway, we click the plus button. We are slowly going up the ladder now. Uh, the screen size is obviously not actually changing. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's see. I'll make this a commit first, and then, and then we'll. Um, I said I would. I said I would deal with the implementation of screen sizes in the, in the next video because that's probably going to take a while. So I guess maybe I'll leave it off here, except for the confirm. Do you want to quit the game? thing that I alluded to doing earlier. I think that's all I wanted to do here. So let's see, buttons for setting screen resolution. And I will do that later. And okay. So I will make one more layer and this is going to be UI game pause menu quit. And this is going to be the, uh, the do you want to quit the game thing. So I'm going to drag one of these up here. Um, there's going to be a text label, do you want to quit the game? There's going to be yes, um, no, and okay, so uh, there's going to be no, quit to main menu and quit to desktop, so that'll be like three buttons and a, a text label, so that's going to be four elements. Okay, uh, where is text? Uh, variables first, the name. Would you like to quit? Uh, next, there is going to be a button. Uh, which is going to say first, no. I should probably, I don't know exactly where these are going to be on the screen, but I should probably put no on the bottom because that is going to be closest to where the user's cursor is going to be when they click that button. So it's it's going to be easier to accidentally cancel quitting the game and go back to go back to gameplay um, than it's going to be to like accidentally click the button to quit the game and accidentally actually quit the game because uh, that would be by far the more destructive change, the, the more destructive error. Um, 
I think I'm going to need to move this down a little bit. Yeah, all right, so that's gonna make space. Uh, quit to desktop. It's gonna be the first one. And quit to the other uh, game's main menu. I'm probably gonna do the main menu soon. Um, things that I know I need to do are like, one, polishing up the gameplay, and two, like, making the visuals a little bit more appealing. Um, I want to have something better in the background than the weird generic skybox that I threw in in like episode two. And um, and then just avoid. I want to have something that looks a little bit better than that, but I'm going to... I'm still thinking about what I exactly want that to look like. Um, I want to do things like particles when, when bullets hit foes, when foes die and all that, just to make the game a little bit more visually interesting. There's a few other things. I've been putting off that I've been I've been doing a lot of procrastination on that front, but that's gonna have to um, be dealt with sooner or later. I just really want to do menus now for some reason. Um, anyway, variables. This will be quit to. Or I guess quit to title would be the more concise way of putting it. So we can have that menu. We can when you actually click the quick game button and like yeah the. Uh, the cancel button is going to be almost, but not quite, on top of the quick game button. So it'll be uh, if you accidentally click something on on this menu as well, it's more likely to be to be that. Uh, we can say instead of instead of uh, doing good old game end. What did I call it? Current current pause screen is going to be UI game pause menu quit. Okay, and now we can run the game. Pause, quit the game, would you like to quit? These buttons don't do anything yet. And uh, as I said, if you, uh, if you accidentally like double click or something instead, you're more likely to end up on, on the no button. And then you'll just be back to where you were a minute ago than you, were to, um, than you would be to accidentally quit the game. Um, that's worthy of a commit. I usually have been putting the implementation of these buttons in their own separate commits after laying out the UI. Uh, would, would you like to quit the game? And now uh, this is the back button, is it not? No, that is the up here. This is the back button. So on, On click is going to be a function. That function is going to be game dot dot current pause screen is going to be UI game pause menu. So we will just go back from this menu um, if that is what we click. Um, quit to desktop is obviously just going to be game end, and quit to main menu is going to be more. We are not going to be doing that today because we do not yet have a main menu. Um, no? Excellent. We are going back to the menu correctly. Um, do I really want to be, like, a stick in the mud about putting every single button in its own commit? Why not? It's fun. It feels more productive when you have more commits in a, uh, in a video. And generally, that's a rather silly reason, but generally, uh, the rule of thumb in, in software dev is to not lump a million different things into a single commit in your source control because that just makes it harder to find what you're looking for if you try to go back for something, uh, among other things. Um, go, go back from the quit menu. I totally misspelled that. Uh, next, quit to desktop is on the top, is it not? It is. This one can just be If I could just, if GameMaker allowed you to just like assign GameMaker functions to variables like this, I would do that. I don't think it does. They may have changed that. I know that the way that the built-in functions have been, um, I know that the way the built-in functions are like indexed in the the memory of the of the game is a little bit different now than it used to be. And, oh cool, that's allowed, okay. Well, I was gonna just wrap this in a, uh, in a function, but we can, uh, we can just throw around the game end function like that. I don't know if that's actually a good idea. I may want to do something by way of like saving your progress, but um, 
that's something that you would that I would really only do one when you toggle something in the settings menu. Uh, like if you click the full screen button, I would I would save that to the configuration file. Or if it's uh, if you finish a level, your player save, I would I would just save the save the player's data when you finish a level. Um, if you want to save scum, go ahead. I don't care. Uh, I don't think I'm really going to be doing any auto saving when the game ends, so that's probably probably fine. Okay. Quit game again, and uh, this is going to be this is going to be done later. Should I leave a note on here that says "quit the title" is going to be implemented later? I don't. Nah, we'll get to that soon enough. I'll probably. I don't know if I'll do that today. I don't have a ton of time today, and um, this recording has been going on for forty-five minutes, so I might just uh, do this like tomorrow or something instead. Obviously, the videos will still be posted uh, once a week, but. All right, I think that is all I wanted to do. We have done a lot of screwing around in menus today. Normally when I say that, that is a bad thing because it is what it comes when I'm doing a let's play and I want to spend a minimal amount of time doing that. But uh, today we've got a, we've got ourselves a settings menu, which partially works, kind of. Uh, we've got ourselves a quit game menu, which, which works as it's intended. Next time we will be actually playing with the screen size and I will be writing some code so that the user interface ends up where it's supposed to when you like go into full screen mode and all that. That's gonna be fun. I hate doing that. Until then, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. So if you're interested in this or if you're interested in some of the weirder things you can do in Game Maker and 3D, uh, feel free to subscribe and stick around. Uh, the code for this will be found in the video description. Uh, look for the GitHub repository. Look for the what are we up to 0.43 release, um, which I will be tagging right now. There we go. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end here, Head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.